Awesome. Uh, so, how many of you have heard about this format known as ZAR? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, nice. Okay. So, this is going to be an introductory talk about. Sorry. This is going to be an introductory talk about how ZAR works using some neat illustrations and a bit of a code to show how ZAR works. And I'm going to try to convert the ZAR logo, which is a PNG, into ZAR format. So, we're going to have. We're going to, we're going to select a lot of things today. Uh, so this is uh, today is 19th of April. Uh, we are at PyCon uh, Germany and PyData Berlin 2023. It's 2:35, 2:36. A little bit about me. Uh, I take care of the community uh, community and the open source software of Zard as their community manager. I have been working with them since one and a half year. Before that, I have uh, chaired six to seven PyData conferences. This, these are mostly PyData Delhi and PyData Global conferences. I before And apart from my volunteer time, I have worked with forensic startups, organizations, and government of India. And when I'm not working, I like to play violin. Any, any of the violin players here? String instruments? Oh, nice. And if you like this talk, you can uh, go to my Twitter handle. I know it looks, looks scary looking. Not as scary as this guy. Yeah, this is this is me. Uh, this is my photo in a pixelate, pixelated version. So yeah, uh, if you want to uh, look at the slides and the code, this is this is the link. You can just go ahead and uh, take a screen screenshot. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no there's no QR code. Uh, you know, but yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, so what I'm gonna about to show you, like what is our uh, and how it works. Uh, and there's some couple of like few lines of code, and like obviously like why you should use it. Like there are so many data formats out there, and why you should use why you should use R, and how it is different. And then we'll come to the specification part, which is uh, more of like a technical thing. I mean, yeah, obviously because it's a PyCon, yeah. And then we can talk about implementations and community. Uh, so Zara was basically created by this person known as Alistair Miles. He is a scientist at Oxford. So basically he was working with genomic data of mosquitoes and their data sets were like in large size, like hundreds of GBs and petabytes. So he needed like a way to how to handle and manipulate the data efficiently and without losing any information. So this was created in 2015 and if you go to this link, this basically uh, in the 2015, it, that's the link of the first commit in the project. And as you can see uh, on the bottom, there's like the Twitter handle, the uh, GitHub link and the website. Uh, it has like a rapidly growing user and in industry base. Uh, people have been using it like, I mean, NASA, if I have to start with, then Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, and all these companies. Uh, and Zar has like implementation in several languages like Python, Julia, C, C++, JavaScript. But this is like PyCon, so I'm going to talking about only the Python implementation of Zar, which is Zar Python. And currently, it has 21 core devs. Uh, yeah, it is sponsored by NumFocus, so NumFocus is and it's funded under CZI. CZI is like the non-profit arm of Facebook. And EOS stands for Essential Open Source Software. So yeah, enough of that. Uh, so yeah, before working, uh, before, uh, yeah, before uh, Zal, let's have a look at what Arian Tensor is. I'm sure like everybody know what Arian Tensor is here, right? Okay, so we can just, uh, I can just skip through these illustrations which I made. Uh, not made, like this is by this person known as Trevor. So like array is like a container of items, like how you should, how you contain your data. Like you have like 1D, 2D, and ND. And it should be like, it could be like 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. And uh, like we have these dimensions, like 1D, 2D, and 3D. So ZAR is actually an, specification, which is actually a technical document of how the array should be organized, your hierarchy should be grouped, how your metadata should look like. And based on this specification, we have like implementations in different languages. And the specification basically lays out how you can store your data in chunked, which is basically div divided, compressed. You can compress those chunks and in n-dimensional manners. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, it's a lot of technical terms, but yeah, I'm going to simplify it in the, in, the, in the next couple of slides. Uh, so. Let's just say you have like a small data set to work with. You have like one GB of data. You can easily load it into your laptop and you know work with it because you have that much memory in your computer. But let's just say, what if your data is too big to fit in your memory? Like, let's, let's just say it's like 100 GBs. You can't just load it and work in it. So you need something which, a data format which could work out of the memory. So that's where basically ZAR kicks in and 
what it does is basically divides your array into equal chunks. Uh, as you can see that the equal chunks have been divided over here, and it compresses all of these individual chunks using the using compressors in the num codex library. Num codex is like a dependency of Zar, which is under the Zar developers organization, and this like, like compressors like Blosk, ZSTD, Zlib, and LZM and all the compressors that you can think of, and you can own, you can so all these chunks are compressed and these chunk these compressed chunks are basically stored in your hard disk not in your main memory and you can work and you can retrieve those chunks that you you want to work with into your into your main memory and then you can make some addition make some subtraction manage manage those chunks and store them back into your main memory and the reads and the writes are basically concurrent so if you have like if you want to work on multiple chunks at the same time you can do that as well uh, so this is what the uh, a group like czar group looks like this is the this is actually a container as you can see the uh, um, this part over here is uh, the actual data which is the binary blob and on the top of it it's we have this metadata metadata so z z array stands for the z array has basically all the uh, important essential information about your czar array what compressor did you use how many chunks you have what like which along which dimension did you chunk your data and uh, other information. And Z adders is actually the custom attributes that you can add to your data set, which could be something like, like the time of the data was taken, like who created this data and how it should be accessed and what's the, uh, I don't know, like password or something. And the, the Z group is basically, uh, Z group is actually uh, when you, <clears throat> So when you have to store like multiple arrays into hierarchies, the Z group uh, attribute will store, will store will store how these all these different arrays are organized in the hierarchies. Mm, so yeah, so th this is a simple uh, what do you call it uh, uh, illustration of how the chunking works and how this the compression works. So we have this like we have uh, we have this n-dimensional big array and we have divided it into four chunks, and each chunk would be uh, assigned a key using mutable mapping fashion in python and every 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 chunk would have key and all and this chunk would be compressed using those that num codex library which i showed earlier and you can if you want to work with the with any of the chunks you can just enter the key and that chunk that chunk will be retrieved not the whole data so let's just say if you're working with like 100 gb of data and you want to just load the last chunk you don't need to like load the whole array into whole whole data set into your memory you can just retrieve that chunk and work on it and yeah, so this is how the uh, the whole cycle of like compression and how does the uh, and all all allotment of key and values work. Uh, so yeah, as I told earlier, like there are different type of compressors available over here. And the next thing is the file storage system. So there are like different type of uh, storage mechanisms for your data on your disk. So you can use like zip store, which is the zip file. You can use memory store in the memory store, which is like directory store, which is like simple fashion directory, how you store files in your laptop or in your system. And then we have like cloud enabled storage like AWS, S3, FS, uh, sorry, AWS, GCS, and Azure. So you can basically directly talk to the cloud using Zor interface as well. Mm, yeah. So. If you uh, so this is the basically the link of the uh, code uh, Google Collab notebook. If you want to have a look at it, uh, I'm gonna switch to my note my notebook, my Jupyter notebook. Is it visible? Is it visible to everyone? Okay. How about now? Okay, cool. Uh, so I I assume everyone is familiar with NumPy. So I'm gonna just skip the introduction to NumPy. Uh, like how to create an array in numpy and how to slice it and everything uh, so this is what this is how you can basically create arrays in zar using the create function so here i have identified the shape of the array which is like 1000 by 1000 and i have identified the chunks like how how many chunks i want to basically split that that whole big array into it and the d type is actually the data type which is the float and this is the store i want to use like the location of my uh, data set uh, and if I run it, and there's, like, now I can see like the Mazar array is stored, and uh, it has like 10,000 chunks because 1,000 by 1,000, when you divide 1,000 by 1,000 into 10, you get 10,000 chunks. And as you can see, like there is no chunks initialized because you haven't written anything on it. So there's like your memory is entirely free right now. There is it is not utilizing any of your memory. And you can see like the com so I haven't mentioned any compressor over here because uh, I don't want to because it's I have to like finish in like 
calculation in a limited time. But as you can see, like if you don't mention any compressor, it default it defaults goes to Blosk. And uh, this is the total size of like 7.6 MB, how much data it's storing. And I just use the, this is fill, va fill values actually like no, uh, I want to see like what's the value written in it. And when I try to access the, uh, like the first chunk, it shows like 0.0, .0 the address is 0, 0.0. And now I want to basically write uh, two, like the scalar value two into the, into the, into, into half of the chunks. And when I do it, like, uh, you can see, uh, like, the half of the data set, half of the chunks are initialized and it's now taking like bytes storing so now it's storing like 210 kb on, into a memory and that and the above like num number of bytes is the actual size of the whole whole chunk and uh, yeah all the other information that you can see and in the next we go i try to attach some uh, custom attributes to the to, to my data set like uh, if i want to add something so here i added like unit per second unit units like meter per second and standard name like win so this is what basically I have, so for, from, for what I've done so far is I created an array, I wrote some data to it, I added some attribute to it. But what, is, what does it look like under the hood? So this is what the uh, hierarchy would look like. So you have this, uh, these small binary blobs with the, uh, uh, the key from 0.0, .0 to uh, 50.0, and then you have this Z array, which is actually the, uh, this one. And Z adders is actually the attributes which I just wrote it to my uh, ZAR array. And if I try to open the Z array, you can see like everything which is everything which is uh, uh, written, everything everything which was created when you created your ZAR array. And if I try to open the Z adders, like you can see like how the uh, attributes are being shown, which I just wrote it to my data set. And Earlier, I talked about the hierarchies, like how different type of hierarchy, different type of arrays are stored in a hierarchy. So I just tried to create like a group over here, and you can see like how this uh, this has like a parent and children and children of children. So yeah, you can see like how these structures are. These are basically structured. Like you can store uh, multiple uh, arrays, multiple ZAR arrays in a hierarchical manner, and you can add as many attributes and as many as many uh, data to it, and. Uh, yeah, so I also have this uh, small, uh, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, like, you know, everything is just uh, organized in a neat fashion for accessibility and for you, for, for you to work with it. Uh, now I'm gonna just try to, uh, I mean, I've already done it, but I'm just gonna try to show it. So I'm gonna try to convert like a pixelated logo of ZAR, which is in PNG format, to actually like ZAR format, which is actually the extension known as ZAR. So I tried to load an image. Uh, so this is something I made uh, myself uh, with the, you know, because I do some pixel art. And uh, I tried to load it and it looks like this. Uh, and then I convert basically this image into a NumPy array uses, using the as array function. And when I converted it, so I can see like the type is the NumPy ND array and the shape and what does it look like. And now when I have to basically convert it to ZAR array, I just need to basically pass it, pass the NumPy array over here into the ZAR array function. And as you can see, like it just gets converted. And I didn't, I didn't, so there, there's, uh, I mean, in the earlier code, I basically, um, where did you go? yeah, I basically, uh, indicated the shape and the chunk and everything. But if I don't do anything, like if I just pass the array, uh, it's capable of you know doing everything on its own. And so over here, I just created the array without specifying chunks, compressor or the shape and everything, and it does everything on its own. And you can see like the data type and the number of chunks. And so there are essentially four chunks and and you can see like how much size it is, it is taking like on the disk and everything. And I try to basically attach the attributes like I just showed before. Uh, and you can see these uh, custom attributes which have attached, attached the uh, the pixel, the ZAR pixel logo. And if I, um, yeah, so this is this is basically me just trying to visualize the ZAR array which I just created. And yeah, uh, so if I have to show you like how does it looks like, uh, so this is this is what we have just created. So this is actually the logo of the ZAR. So this is just the image, and it has. If I do this, I have this ZRA file because it's like hidden, so I can just hide it. And yeah, so this is actually your image, and you can store any data, like any data you have, like as large as like TBs. And I, I'm going to show like a sample data set of 54 terabytes, which is stored on Amazon AWS. And this is yeah, this is it. So your data is like uh, stored over here and you can convert any data 
using ZAR in, in this manner. And this is the data that we have earlier we have created earlier, which is the 10,000 by 10,000 chunks. So how, this is how the chunks would look like. And this also has this ZR and ZRTOS file at the top. Okay, coming back to the slides. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So why you should use a chart? Because uh, there are like a couple of reasons that I would like to uh, show you. Like you can chunk arrays along any dimension. So th the chunking that I've done was basically the default chunking. And, but you can chunk across any dimensions, like across, across or vertical or horizontal or beneath the depth. And arrays can be written concurrently from multiple threads and processes. And this is really helpful when you're working with a large data set across cloud or in local machine. It's easy to extend, like the styling is mostly similar to NumPy, like how NumPy works. And the compression support is like really great. You can use any compressor and the num codex is actually a dependency of ZAR. So yeah. Uh, and uh, Simple. So the last point is simple. It's simple and it's open specification, which allows it to be hackable. Uh, so the specification basically is open source, which allows anyone like you can just you can just go home and try to implement ZAR into your own programming language, and it would work easily. So everything is like just open. Uh, and like when you when you should basically use ZAR. So when you have like absurdly large data sets. So let's just say if you are dealing with. Uh, hold on. Yeah. So this is like a nice graphic. So let's just say you're dealing with this 120 terabyte of file, which is in TIFF format. So this is like a big monolithic file you have. And let's just say if you want to access the middle part, which is highlighted in the middle, and how would you do it? Like you have to basically load the whole, whole big monolithic file into your memory to work with it. But if you have your, if you have like a format which is which has chunked your data sets into like small small chunks, you can actually access that data set using that key which I showed you earlier in the illustration. Work with it and then store it back into your main data set. And you have this uh, attributes and all these stuff which you can basically work with. Um, yeah, and if you want to share your data set, I mean, uh, essentially, uh, I, th I think this has been case earlier. Like people have used people have used you know hard disk and pen drives to actually share your data set physically from one place to another. But having like a chunk format like something like ZAR makes it very easy to share across clouds, cloud storage. And yeah, I mean, this is like a illustration. Like I sometimes like in, in, like earlier people have to like use actually download the whole data set if they want to work on it. But yeah, that's not the case now. Like you can you can just retrieve those things that you want to work with. Um, yeah. So this is the, if you want to see more illustrations uh, like these one, like you can go to this link. Uh, this was made by this person was Henning Falk, which the name you can see at the bottom. So yeah, you can take a picture or so. Mm. Yeah, so just a little bit about specification. This is the uh, technical specification, which is actually provides a protocol. It has, is anyone familiar with web standards, like what web standards are, W3C protocols, like how basically internet works and how basically two points talk to each other. So this is, so ZAR specific, uh, specification is something similar like that. And you can uh, go to this link at the top and you can see the specification. So currently version two is in effect and we have just released version three, which is gonna be out in like a, month or so. So it has like really, really good, uh, what do you call it, support for extension points. So extensions are, extensions are something which you can basically add without, without losing the existing capability of ZAR. I can talk about it more uh, after the talk. Uh, so this is, uh, so yeah, just coming back to like what the, what does the beauty of ZAR means. So this is uh, on the left hand side of your image, this is like a 54 terabyte image of an oceanography. This is like sea surface temperature. And on the right side, this is the uh, microscopic image of the COVID-19 infection in lungs. And this, was, this is basically like everything is ZAR. You can, uh, you can go into slides and you can check this out. And this was basically uh, visualized using this Vitesi. Um, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but you can see on the, at the top, uh, there's a URL. And this is basically a visualized visualizer for n-dimensional arrays. So this whole data set is in ZAR. And uh, yeah, you can see like how beautiful it's like, you know, take a moment. Uh, yeah, j uh, just to talk about interoperability, I think we folks are familiar with what Task and XR is, right? So you can, you don't, you don't need to basically install ZAR to use ZAR, you can use ZAR through uh, XRA and Dask as well. You can open your ZAR, ZAR data sets using Dask and you can write to it as well. Uh, so these are the implementations I was mentioning earlier, like you can see Java, C, Julia, JavaScript, so you don't need to just, uh, I mean, 
Python user to use R, you can use R through any other language as well. And yeah, it's severely like easy to uh, implement R from scratch. So I think we are lacking R, sorry, no, Rust and Go implementation. So if any of the folks want to give it a try, uh, feel free to. Uh, yeah, and Zar community is like everyone who loves Zar or who works with Zar. And if you are a user, if you're a developer, if you're just an occasional contributor, you're welcome. I'm the community manager of Zar, so I take care of everyone who is inside the community and who basically <laughs> wants to contribute. And we have just developed this, no, it's been a year that we are working through this process known as ZIP, which is, is, which is the basically similar to PEP, but it is for Zar specification, how the changes should be incorporated into the Zar specification. Uh, what does V3 looks like? It's mostly a, a change in the metadata and how the chunk should be handled, but it's just evolutionary. Like we were trying some benchmarks earlier and it's been super fast since the V2. And if you want to join our, get, join our Gitter, you can just go to the link at the top, at the bottom. Uh, this is our Gitter channel, which is also like an open source, open source uh, communication channel. Uh, these are some of the data sets which are on the cloud right now, like CM, CMIP6, which is the uh, public data set of the uh, climate model. This is like uh, one petabyte. And the on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see this is the sea surface temperature. I think this was hosted by NASA, yeah. Yeah, this is hosted by NASA. It is, it's also of 54 terabyte in total. And this is like one single ZAR store. So you don't need to like actually uh, load this 54 terabyte data to work with it. Like you can just load few MBs or few GBs to work with it. But you can just go, uh, I can I can share these share the data set of the link of these data sets and you can see have a look at this. Um, yeah, I mean these are just some things like uh, if I wanted to show do I have do I have time? Okay, cool. Uh, these are the some of the uh, universities or research groups or companies who are using ZAR for their storing data set like. Uh, Genelia, Ali, Microsoft, NASA, and CAR. OME stands for Open Microscopy, uh, and uh, mostly the the domains which basically produce large data sets are geospatial, microscopy, uh, genome sequencing, and data science. So these these fields have been using ZAR heavily for the last five or six years, and. Uh, yeah, one more thing like which I wanted to mention is like uh, this is like a very versatile format and there have been development of conventions on top of ZAR. So you can see like I mentioned GeoZAR over here. So GeoZAR is actually the geospatial extension of ZAR which actually fiddles with the metadata to a level which is readable by satellite. And OME ZAR is actually the uh, microscopic version of ZAR, like how you deal with microscopic images of ZAR. NC ZAR, is, I think people are familiar with NetCDF, NetCDF data format. Oh yeah, so NCZAR is actually the extension of uh, the NetCDF version of ZAR. And uh, yeah, I think, I think yeah, that, that's, that's, it. that's it from my side. I may have rushed a little bit, but yeah, you're feel free to uh, join our office hours and community calls if you want to learn more. Uh, these are the handles if you want to uh, have a look. Uh, yeah, I mean, any questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, so far, I think we don't have any any questions from Slido, but um, I think that's also no problem. So I will ask. Oh, yeah. Yep. Maybe could you enter it in Slido? Or would you? Yeah. I'll just pause the microphone. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to get a better understanding of how uh, ZAR compared to format I know. Sorry? Uh, I'm trying to get a better understanding of how ZAR compared to other formats that I know. So oh. like you were talking about using ZAR for very large data sets. So for instance, if I have a large data set of images, I will store them as a JPEG. And if I have a large data set of structured data, I will store them as pockets. So how does ZAR compare to that? How is it better? Yeah, so, uh, so, I, so I mean, I would, I, would, I would just ask you another question, like how, how much large of, like what's the largest image size you have de dealt with? Uh, I don't know, a few millions? Sorry? A few millions? No, I was talking about image, like what's the largest size of the image or JPEG you have dealt with? How many images, you mean? No, like a single size of the image. Oh, single size, sorry. Uh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, 1,000 by 1,000, something like this. 
Yeah, so that would be somewhere around a few hundred MBs. Or it may, may, may basically. I'm not sure about the site, sorry. <laughs> yeah, basically, it was easy to load in your memory, right? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, your laptop didn't crash when you were trying to load it. But let's just say if you have an image size, so I was just showing this single image. Yeah, so this single image is like 30 GB. If you try to load it in your memory, it's just going to crash it. So you need like a chunked format, which you can easily load the uh, essential part of the data set you want to work with, and then you can store it back. And I mean, you don't need to like actually uh, load the whole image to visualize it. There are like multiple visualizers, like n-dimensional visualizer. Have you heard about Napari? Napari, there is like uh, NeuroGlancer. They basically uh, visualize your n-dimensional arrays, no matter how big it is, on a web browser. Okay, so, yeah. Very clear. Sorry, I didn't see that slide. I was uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I will go to the next question. So, uh, question. How does the performance compare to just using a NumPy? Uh, performance, like, in what sense? Uh, you're, you want to perform some operation over this array. You want to find the sum, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I haven't done any benchmarks yet, but I think it's quite similar. Because uh, ZAR pulls NumPy as one of their dependency. I hope that answered the question. I will move on. Move on. Uh, what types of data do you think ZAR is potentially not the most suitable for? Hmm. Um, so I think uh, the one of the uh, well, when I see in the GitHub issues and all the stuff, people have from from the deep learning and the machine learning community have been coming to us, and they they. They were thinking like how they can store their CSVs and parquet files, which are like very big. And mostly the uh, as I mentioned earlier, the domains which are which are which are using ZAR more are the geospatial genomics and microscopy, not the deep learning and machine learning folks. So I think like uh, this is this is the question that needs to be answered, and this is I think answer for your question as well. Uh, I haven't experiment with, haven't experimented myself, experimented myself, but I think this is uh, this is like a big question mark if it if it can handle like CSV and Parquet, raw data sets. Um, in the meantime, we got one question um, from Slido, and this is how does SAR compare to Parquet? <coughs> I was sorry. Okay, so then I will move on. Sorry. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, yeah, we've also been using SAR, uh, and it's awesome. Um, I have a question concerning the version three. Um, because I think version 2 has some issues when you store very small chunks on cloud storages with uh, yeah, which have um, high latency. So we were looking forward to version 3 and my understanding was that there's the specification which seems to be rather final but no final implementation. Oh, only I uh, only for like experimental ones. So maybe you can clarify that because of the yeah, yeah, really definitely. interesting for me. Just give me a second. So I have this issue already open on my laptop. Uh, yeah. So this is the issue which was created two weeks ago, and this is the uh, final what do you call it? Final uh, checkpoint to the completion of the ZIP one, which is actually the version three of specification. ZIP is actually the ZAR enhancement proposal, and the first ZIP was the V3 specification. And if you have to, uh, I can uh, you can take a picture or so, like if you can see the link. And on the bottom you can see there is the uh, this implementation, which is the closest implementation of the V3 specification, which is known as Zarita. So you can have a look at this. Uh, I can share the link with you uh, after the talk. And this is the uh, this is like the prototype implementation because V3 is still in the review. And it's going to take like a month or so to uh, complete the review and just implement it in ZAR Python. But there is also a V3 implementation in ZAR Python as well. But it has, but there's a technical gap because the V3 implementation was implemented last somewhere around July last year. And there has been changes to the specification a lot since then because we have been developing the specification since two or three years. So this is, Zarita is the closest one if you want to try V3, and after V3 is finalized, you can actually jump back to ZAR Python with the, with the actual V3 implementation. Cool, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. So thank you very much. I think we have to close the session right now. Um, I think if there are any more questions, you will be happy to answer the questions on uh, in, in person or via your ch um, channels you um, showed in your talk. Thank you very much. One more round of, of applause for Sankey Dentist's talk.